Dear brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be amongst those who have observed Ramadan and have all of their sins forgiven and all of their deeds accepted. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who if Laylatul Qadr has passed us in these first five nights that we observed it and that Allah overlook our shortcomings and that Allah write it down for us fully. And if it is still ahead of us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala activate us towards it with the fullness of our sincerity and the fullness of our strength and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it. Allahumma ameen. I wanted to focus today inshallah ta'ala with the few moments that I have with you on this idea of the effect that Laylatul Qadr has. And I'll explain why I want to talk about that for a moment inshallah ta'ala. When it comes to Siyam, when it comes to fasting Ramadan, Imam bin Hajar rahimahullah ta'ala mentions that the sign of an accepted Ramadan has a component of it that is a feeling and a component of it that has a very observable impact in terms of your deeds. So when it comes to the feeling, the one who is pleased with the departure of Ramadan and the one who is distressed with its coming forward, that is a sign of a Ramadan that is not accepted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That if one Ramadan leaves, you are not sad over its departure. And when it comes, it makes you sad. You are sad of its arrival. That is a sign that you are refusing the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you are not allowing Ramadan to penetrate your heart whatsoever. So that is the person whose fasting only is abandoning their food and drink for a month as an exercise. But spiritually speaking, there's no penetration. So that's the feeling of Ramadan. As for the effect, it's the consistency of your deeds. Not the consistency in the same portion, but the consistency of an increase in your deeds after Ramadan. So there is a feeling and there is an impact, an observable impact. Did I quit the sins that I brought to me before Ramadan? Did I quit the sins or not? Simple, observable, right? Or am I still doing the same sins? And then did I increase in my good deeds or not? Right? And is there a consistent increase in those good deeds or not? Whether that is that I'm now going to have a more consistent output of Quran recitation or prayer or coming to the masjid or fasting or charity or righteousness and good character. What are the observable increases in my deeds? So it's a feeling and an effect. What about Laylatul Qadr? Right? Because the Prophet ﷺ put Ramadan, whoever fasts the month of Ramadan with faith and seeking the reward will have all of their previous sins forgiven. And then Man Qama Ramadan, whoever stands up at night praying the nights of Ramadan, Allah will forgive all of their sins. And then whoever observes Laylatul Qadr specifically, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will do away with everything that came before so long as it was done with Iman and Ihtisab, faith and seeking the reward. So what is the impact? Well, the impact, the desired impact is very clear. It is greater than a thousand months. I want the reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? So I'm striving for the jewel of this month, right? The prize of this month is Laylatul Qadr. Is there an impact and an effect beyond that though? Or is it just that I pushed myself and I hope I got it last night and the sunrise looked amazing. Alhamdulillah, I got it. Bismillah, let's do this again next year. Is that it? Or is there anything beyond that? When is Laylatul Qadr? Because we get asked every day. When the Qadr of Allah is greater in your heart, when the estimation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has become greater in your heart, Laylatul Qadr or Qadr or Qadr is an increase. It's an increase in Allah's reward, an increase in the angels that come down. It is the night of power. It is the night of decree. It has so many rich meanings. But when the estimation of Allah has grown in your heart, then that is a sign that you have observed and caught Laylatul Qadr. Now let's talk about that for a moment, bidnillahi ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in admonishing the disbelievers, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ They did not give Allah His due estimation. And what is that? When they would ask these questions about particularly the creation of Allah. How can Allah control the heavens and the earth? How does Allah take care of the sun and the moon at the same time? How can Allah take care of this person and that person at the same time? What do you mean that the heavens and the earth will be rolled up in, in, in the hand of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that suits Him subhanahu wa ta'ala? What does that even mean? How do we, how, how does Allah see all of this? How does Allah hear all of this? How does Allah know what's in my heart and your heart simultaneously? How is that possible? And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says they did not give Allah his due estimation. Like you don't realize the power of Allah, do you? You don't realize how alim, how great Allah is in his 
limitless power and ability. Remember, that's the qadr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the power of Allah. You can't understand how great it is. They don't understand it, do they? The one who created us all with a customized plan, planning all of our affairs, nothing happens to us or for us except by his permission, not even a movement or a thought or a look, nothing, a heartbeat. The one who did all of that will resurrect it all without any deficiency. So that's the foundation. And then you go on to the other level of that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions to us that on the day of judgment, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sets up the mawazin, the scales, and if you were to put the heavens and the earth in the scales, in the mawazin, then it would fit them and it would weigh them. It would fit them and it would weigh them. It would fit them physically and it would weigh every detail of them, subhanAllah. And the Prophet ﷺ said that there are angels that have been created. Every single part of the heavens is occupied by an angel that is either in a place of standing, or a place of ruku', a place of bowing, or a place of sujood, or a place of prostration. And on the day of judgment, all they're doing is doing tasbih. Can you imagine? They've been created, and all they do is tasbih. They glorify their Lord. They don't do anything else. Every part of the heavens. Can you imagine, subhanAllah, we have no idea how vast the heavens are, how vast the galaxy are, how vast the observable is, what then of that which is not even observable. We're constantly trying to discover more. Prophet Sallallahu said, not even a hand spin of four fingers. Is there not an angel that is just saying, SubhanAllah, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la, Subhana Rabbi Al-Azim. Glory be to my Lord the Exalted, glory be to my Lord the Most High. And the Prophet Sallallahu said that on the Day of Judgment, Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala sets up the scales and He commands them to raise their heads. All the, they didn't do sujood for a night, <laughs> they did sujood for an, an existence. The entire time, prostration, Subhana Rabbi Al-A'la. And they look up, and the first thing that they say is, Subhanaka ma'abadnaka haqqa ibadatik. Glory be to you, we did not worship you as much as you deserve or you have the right to be worshipped. Think about that for a moment. Not a night, not even 80 years. From the time they were created to the time of the Day of Judgment. Nothing but tasbih, glorifying the greatness of Allah. And on the Day of Judgment, now you can raise your head. Subhanaka ma'abadnaka haqqa ibadatik. I didn't do enough. You should have been worshipped more. You deserve more than this, but this is all that I could physically have given you. Now the angels never got distracted by food and drink and intimacy because they don't do that in Ramadan or outside of Ramadan. They never got distracted by choice. They're not like human beings. All they do is worship Allah. And that's all they can say on the Day of Judgment when they see the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We didn't do enough. So dear brothers and sisters, what is the point of this for us in terms of a feeling and an impact of Laylatul Qadr in particular? There are three things that the ulama mention in terms of understanding, having a greater Qadr of Allah in your heart, a greater estimation of Allah in your heart. Three of them. Number one, Allah is worth a greater sacrifice. A greater sacrifice. I was tired. I'm sleep deprived. I'm hungry. I'm thirsty. It's hard, right? Sometimes it gets difficult. I feel the, the pain of that sacrifice. Well, Allah is worth a greater sacrifice. So the next time you're pulled between the voice of righteousness and the voice of wickedness, when you're prompted by the angel that prompts you to do good and the shaitan that prompts you to do evil, which voice are you going to listen to? Allah is worth a greater sacrifice from me. So you know what? Allah is worth less sleep. Allah is worth more sacrifice. Allah is worth the pain of sin. Allah is worth the pain of blame. Allah is worth all of these things. A greater sacrifice, that's number one. The second thing that the ulama mentions is that Allah is worth a greater share. What does that mean? A greater share of your wasail, your means to reach Him. It starts off with the faculties that Allah has given you of hearing. Allah is worth a greater portion of what I listen to. Allah is worth a greater portion of what I look at. Allah is worth a greater portion of my thoughts, of my contemplation, my fu'ad, what occupies my heart. Allah is worth a greater portion of a share, a greater share of that. So it starts with that. Then they say, Allah is worth a greater portion of my time. Because time is a means to reach Allah. Allah is worth a greater portion of my wealth. Charity is better 
than what I spent for my own desires in this life, what I spent upon the poor and the oppressed for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, what I spend upon righteousness, what you have disappears, but what is with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remains forever. It's worth more of my wealth. And so there's an observable increase, this is the observable part, an observable increase in the share that you're now going to allocate of your speech, of your listening, of your sight, of your time, of your thinking, of your thought, and then of your wealth, of your efforts, of your deeds for Allah. A greater share. And the last thing, a greater hope in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. What do you want from Allah? You know, when someone makes dua to Allah and there's a doubt, can he really answer me? You didn't give Allah his due estimation. When someone is pulled, you know, I don't know if, am I going to really realize like his Jannah and what Allah is promising, is it really going to be there and is it really going to be all worth it? مَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ You did not give Allah his due estimation. When a person seeks forgiveness from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, they say, I don't know if Allah is going to forgive me or not. You know, I have some really big sins that I've committed. مَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِهِ you're not giving Allah his due credit. You're not giving Allah his proper estimation. All of that means a greater hope in Allah, increasing your hope in Allah. When you diminish your hope in Allah, what you are really doing is you are suggesting a deficiency on his part subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has no deficiency. And so dear brothers and sisters, with Laylatul Qadr in particular, if Allah increases the estimation, the Qadr of Allah, the power of Allah in our hearts, the share of Allah in our hearts, that is a sign of an accepted Laylatul Qadr. And if there is an observable increase in your sacrifice for Him, an observable increase in the share of your faculties and your means that you allocate towards Him, and a greater increase in your hope in Him, then that is an increase that we seek in Laylatul Qadr. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst those who observe Ramadan, who observe Qiyam, who observe Laylatul Qadr, who realize its full reward. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward us with what we cannot comprehend in this life. What is greater than anything we could perceive and what lasts beyond our perception, what lasts eternally. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the full reward of it. Assalamu alaikum Islam Box family. We need your support more than ever. Your support can help us continue to educate and motivate people to make and publish videos daily. Jazakallah.